Whether it's saving lives in healthcare, battling blazes as a firefighter, or keeping people safe as a police officer, the pandemic has made these jobs all the more difficult to carry out. But what about those that need to learn how to do the job in the first place? With emergency services being stretched thin and social distancing in place, it means face-to-face -face training isn't as easy as it used to be. But that doesn't mean that they can't still be trained. Sure, people have been using video calling or slide presentations, but what about virtual reality? First up, firefighting. Vobling have created a platform where you can customize the fire training scenario by specifying the environment, the type of fire itself, and how to put it out. This extinguisher that they provide has been fitted with trackers to make it feel like you're operating a real one and not just a couple of controllers. Aside from firefighters, it's designed to train office workers so they can also learn how to tackle workplace fires. But what about the more serious scenarios? River have created a way for firefighters to learn almost on the go. By filming 360 degree videos of big expensive setups, firefighters can put on a wireless headset and go through the training as if they were there. Now, looking at this, I thought, isn't this just playing a video? How exactly can this be any more useful in virtual reality? Simply, we can't get those venues on a day-to-day -day basis because we can't just set fire to buildings. That also costs us in the region of between 10 and 15,000 pounds a time. So we, we ran a, a brief feedback session this morning with the crews that actually attended the, the scenario and a number of other people have seen it who didn't go and they were really engaged of almost entering the scenario themselves, verbally talking about what they'd do, how they'd do it. Right, that's what's going on with firefighting. Let's move on to healthcare. Fundamental VR system helps train surgeons and nurses on how to perform certain tasks during procedures. By using haptic feedback through the tools, the user can feel how they're doing in the virtual procedure. Is this on something? Is, is it, am I touching something? No, no, it's, it's in the air. And the system is also accredited, which means it's also a way for some in healthcare to earn credits for their course. And their multi-user system means students can remotely patch into virtual surgeries to watch and learn, an alternative to traditional learning and examination. So the pandemic has just accelerated, in my view, a trend that was already taking place, and that's about being able to go 24 hours a day into a learning environment now that they can't get into the operating room as, as easily as they used to. The numbers of cases are dramatically reduced. People don't want to come into hospital at the moment, and this is a, an opportunity to fill some of that gap. But for more COVID-19 specific scenarios, a hospital in Taiwan is already trialing another system. Created by Simex and HTC, doctors can use this VR setup to train how to interact with patients who may have COVID-19, such as putting on protective gear, taking temperatures and gathering medical samples. So there's less wastage of real PPE and no risk of contracting the virus. That's healthcare done. So finally, let's look at the police. We went out to the police constabulary in Derbyshire, where officers are learning how and when to use a taser in virtual reality. Normally, you'd be taught in a room where someone in a big blue padded suit would approach you with a rubber knife and officers would use mock taser cartridges to subdue the bad guy like this. But these cartridges are expensive, around 30 quid a pop. And being in a room in your workplace isn't exactly the same as a life-threatening scenario. So virtual reality company AVRT have created a massive space using these sensor mats where officers can put on a headset and roam around a virtual environment. Mind you stepping over to that side for me? Can... They can be transported to a normal street, an alleyway or a rooftop to create a more realistic feeling. And an instructor even adds a voice so it feels as though you're dealing with a real person. And things got intense. Transition here. Yeah, Put the weapon down! Put the weapon down! Stay on the floor, stay on the floor! Stay on the floor, It highlights a few flaws that we have in sort of real life training. Uh, in terms of obviously 
people come to do a role play and there's somebody in a big blue suit that's a taser suit and it kind of gives people um, precondition what they think is going to happen. So in the VR world it's just nice that we can input certain scenarios that they're not aware of. I, I completely mirror that. It, you do get fully submerged into the scenario which you don't think you will by putting something over your face and ears. But as soon as that headset goes on and the headphones go on, you do get straight into it and you forget about everybody else around you and you just deal with what you see. And it was time for me to give it a go, to test how immersive it really was and see if it would affect whether I pulled the trigger or not. Put the knife down. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, take a step back. David, David, go back. Go, oh, hey, hey, David, st drop the knife, drop the knife. David, stop, stop where you're standing. I've got a taser. Do not get any closer. Put the knife down, put it down. <sighs> that don't feel good. Honestly, I, twice, twice I, I've gone into that and I've purposely not fired this. And the third time, I forced myself to fire it. Forced myself. And I, I, I hated it. I knew I'd hate it and I did hate it. I really did feel stressed. And the instructor's personal responses to what I was saying piled even more pressure on me. I really did think about the gravity of actually firing that taser. I think that's enough. I, th I think we've done enough now. Yeah. We happy? There is a, I think, an issue with trust between the public and the police force, and a lot of that is down to how force is deployed by the police force. There is a huge story that goes on before the deployment of a weapon, before a weapon is even drawn, before any use of force is engaged. We can really capture right from the start of that first interaction with someone, measure what sort of empathy we're getting from our police officers, and, and actually make officers accountable for the, the training of their decision-making process right up to and including that use of force. But do these simulations actually help people to learn effectively? One of the research challenges is proving the effectiveness of the training. So you're training for a, a dangerous situation and making sure that transfers to the real world is a, a challenge because you can't ethically or safely expose people to this dangerous situation to see how well they perform. What I've seen in this area is that people have a tendency to be very excited about this technology and perhaps not ask to see the evidence that it's effective. I think it should be used cautiously until we have the evidence to use it to a greater extent. So crossing from the real to the virtual world may seem like an obvious alternative to traditional training. But given how much is on the line with the work of these emergency services and how new this all is, Perhaps it's better to use virtual reality to complement rather than replace for now.